Karen ben, uh, Brown Eno, VP Commercial Business EMEA at Red Hat, who is a long standing supporter of OFE and a gold sponsor of our summit. Good morning, bonjour, hello uh, online uh, attendees. Good news is that I'm the last speaker before we have lunch, at least for those who are physically in this room. Revolution and evolution. What a difference one letter can make. And I'm French, so, no, so you know revolution is not something unknown to us. Since uh, 1789, we do know what revolution made to our country. We at Red Hat started 30 years ago with a revolutionary mindset to open up the IT market and unlock the world's potential with open source. Today, we have a somewhat evolutionary mindset, thanks to the fact that open source has won, was said multiple times today in this room. It has won both as a development model for software, but also as a way to understand, collaborate, and solve problems together. Defending open, remains front and center, whether it is at the command line or complying with the EU policy, as well as engaging with policymakers to discuss unintended consequences for open innovation and its underpinning global commons. Red Hat and our wider community of several million innovators continue to apply the same open logic to technology and policy objectives. I think there is something wrong with the presentation. <laughs> okay, so now let's stay on this one and then I'll do it myself. Thank you. Uh, where was I? Uh, continue to apply the same open logic to technology and policy objectives. We saw this with Linux. We saw this with cloud, with containers, and now with AI and edge. Our common challenge in the future will be less persuading the world about the power of open, I think it's almost a given now, but defending highest possible hygiene levels of what we actually understand open to mean in law and practice. The advantages of default to open have convinced many people, companies, authorities, for good reasons. It's not limited to just software development. It has created new ecosystems that employ thousands and thousands, if not millions, of people all across the AU. Open source is about a culture of sharing between hobbyists, communities, companies, civil society, and government. The borders are blurry in a positive way, creative, creating sorry, a cooperative ecosystem. And this ecosystem is what Red Hat helped create and foster over, over more than 30 years. And we are proud of our collective achievements. The number of people we employ and revenue we, we generate are but, are but the smallest part of this success. It is the ecosystem and cooperation on many levels that generates benefits everywhere. And rest assured, this ecosystem keeps on growing. So, many numbers. We've already got a lot during this morning, okay? Last summit, we celebrated the AU study 
which called out the significance of this bubble uh, bottom left about this, those amounts 65 to 95 billion euro representing the value of the open source business in Europe. Big. The numbers we heard earlier from the competitive advantage panel from Numeum and Bitcom, merci Jean-Philippe, provide further evidence of the core role this global open commons play across all European verticals. With today's imminent AI Act adoption, it makes sense to also call out bottom right, just for having you following what I'm talking about with all those bubbles, okay, that 420 million open source AI projects are on the GitHub platform, 420 million. Red Hat has long been contributing in developing open source AI ML to provide customers with both predictive and generative AI. We are fully 100% open source and make available projects and tools on Open Data Hub. And last, I will not comment on the 8.8 .8 trillion uh, uh, dollars already covered at two occasions uh, this morning, to save time and to be closer to the, to the lunch time. So, we are not only uh, in the beautiful Brussels today, but also in the midst of the Belgian EU presidency. Let me mention a couple of success stories in Belgium, which is another a fabulous demonstration of what open source can bring. I hope I pronounce it correctly. Digital Vlanderen. Am I right? Okay. Memo and Ghent University, they upgraded their legacy data platform to a modern open source and open standards based approach with OpenShift. On the many benefits Digital Vlanderen. So was to improve efficiency to deliver a critical COVID certification project, project in only six weeks, saving lives. This is also the contribution of open source to our citizens. I'm also proud to say that we have many open source success stories across the public sector in Europe. So, similarly, in the private sector, with German, Austrian, and Swiss railways, Deutsche Bahn, OBB, and SPB, to name them differently, they join together in multiple hackathons in order to use open collaboration so as to better understand and serve their customers, in that case, their passengers. These companies brought together their developers to work on practical, but also sometimes fun problems. The rules were simple. Sharing is compulsory. There are no secrets. Transpa transparency is also an open source value. We all know that. So together, they found timely solutions and improved services for their passengers, leading to both cost savings and growing their customer satisfaction. Happier customers, happier passengers. Those previous open source examples do showcase the power of open innovation and cooperation based on principles derived from open source. Open is the new lingua franca in the connected world. And we have found Europe to be a natural culture fit for all of this and expanded our footprint accordingly. Red Hat has its biggest development and engineering center for good reasons in the Brno, Czech Republic. We see the AU as vibrant, and innovative place to be. 
The key, though, is to understand open source as key to choice and sovereignty to tackle lock-in and drive transformation. Europe is a significant and growing contributor to the global commons. This is surely another metric when evaluating the success of default to policy in the future. We at Red Hat actively engage and provide policy, legal, developer, and operational resources, meaning tangible things, to support the open source community across a number of key policies from procurement, research and development funding, cybersecurity, through, through to standardization and intellectual property. The Cyber Resilience Act has been one such example of defending what is key to open source communities as well as downstream deployments. And we call out and we thank all those who, such as OFE, NLNet, Eclipse, Linux Foundation, Apache, Python, and many others, who all engaged successfully across multiple institutions to help create a level playing field for open in the wider sense and mitigate unintended consequences. Clearly, we are all now working on several AU policy files, such as the CRA, and we look forward to carrying on this successful collaboration. This weekend's FOSDEM and OFE's policy works are excellent example. Thank you. Excellent examples of the importance of us all to work together to analyze and map out these requirements, as well as our collaboration on a range of open related items in both implementing guidance or standards, as well as new legislation in the next mandate. We grow when we share. Today's provisional agreement of the AI Act is a timely reminder that open has never been so important. Failure to double down to our, on our collective defense of open policy over the past 25 years risk a repeat of the FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Remember the brother war? A perfect example. The risk of concentration of an emerging market on a selected few companies, diminishing opportunities for small and local players, for instance. Much more work and collaboration is needed. An organization such as Open Forum Europe will play an important role in facilitating a timely discussion and articulation, so as not only to defend open in the emerging field, but also how open creates growth and opportunities, especially here in the EU. So let's back to the R question at the beginning of my intervention. Open source has won, and the need for any kind of revolution has become very much an evolutionary path. Never has there been a more compelling time to embrace open source and further boost contribution across Europe, verticals, and public sectors. We look forward to continuing our collaboration with you all during the next upcoming AU mandate. Thank you very much. Merci.